This is your election headquarters. This weekend, we've been bringing you extensive coverage of the governing New Patriotic Party's election of executives across all 16 regions, except the central region, which comes off during this week. We'll tell you why. And there have been surprise defeats and mostly victories. That's got many of you talking. Tonight on The Probe, we shall attempt to bring you a quick recap of all the results from the various regions and then touch base with some of the winners as well as losers. And then the General Secretary of the NPP, John Buedu, for a quick assessment of the polls so far. The Probe is live on the Joy News Channel. It's on Joy 99.7 FM for our radio audience. We're on DSTV Channel 421, Go TV 144. You can also listen on DSTV Channel 856. And then myjoyonline.com. We are live also on all social media platforms. You can tweet at us. It's hashtag the probe. I am MFA Apao. A quick turnaround and then we get talking. I dare you here for 2024. No, I unity. My regional executive is not my name. I am Obia wujina ye bia no nya no kresa olu sui. E be de na part papa say. O ye campaign. Na dru ba bia. On kasa enfantia. E wo musa nya sa na ye pe no. Ne mum. E dru ba bia e se ne ka tre makro e dru ba bia na ka. So we be here bonia. For 2024 breaking the eight sick. My name is Regional Executive C. Yadi Ache Wubia. Nana, dia asye ino. Adia asye ino. Atrasa MPP. Our campaign of breaking the eight have started from Babayara Stadium. They cannot stop us. And DC, you cannot stop us. You can spread the scandalous name about MPP. You can spread the scandalous name. You can lie. You can propagate, you can bring fake news, but winning the 2024 elections, winning the 2024 elections is movement, it is a movement, it is a movement, it is a movement, it is stronger than Apata. And this is your election headquarters. Welcome once again. We're taking a look at the NPP's regional executive election. All 16 regions are supposed to be electing executives uh, this weekend, except the central region. We know uh, there are issues there. Richard Kujunyakun will join us with all the details shortly. But so far, uh, the regional chairman that we have for T region, we have Evans Dapa. For the Ashanti region, of course, you saw Bernard Entribuesiako, Chairman Muntumi, uh, retaining his seat despite all the odds. Greater Accra, we have Divine Agohom. We have Volta region, uh, also Makafui Wanya. We have the Eastern region, Jeffrey Kunedu. At some point, he'll be joining us. Western region, we have Francis Indedesia. For the Western North, Benjamin Ama will be looking at Bono and Bono East because they were supposed to be voting today. In the Ahafu region, we have Kobuna Owusu Setre. Uh, then Savannah region, we have Professor Kalmonia. The Northern region, Mohammed Adam Bantima Samba. The Upper East region, we have Anthony Namo. Northeast region, Nuruddin Fuseni. Upper West, SB Cambri. And the Central region, like I said, that election is yet to be held. And uh, let's start off from the Bono and the Bono East region. And my colleague, Precious Semivo, has been monitoring uh, the situation there. My colleagues will join me via Zoom as well. We'll hit the Upper West region. We'll hit the Central region. Uh, the Eastern region, interesting contest there as well. We'll be taking a look at, and much later, we'll be joined on the uh, via Zoom also by um, the General Secretary of the party, uh, John Buedu, uh, joining us. But Precious, if you can hear me, good evening and welcome. Um, this is the election headquarters. What's the situation in the Bono and the Bono East region? Where have you been covering uh, today? Hello, Precious. You have to unmute, Precious. Yes. Okay, so uh, that's uh, my colleague. Precious, can you hear me? Okay. 
It doesn't, it doesn't appear we can hear a pressure semaphore, but he'll be giving us all the updates. I'm told elections are over there. Uh, we'll get to know who are the executives for those regions. But Rafiq Salam has also been monitoring the situation in the Upper West region. Uh, they voted uh, yesterday. Some interesting uh, speech there by uh, the former Saudi Arabia teacher uh, there, and he's uh, the chairman, has been retained in spite of uh, concerns that were raised by some delegates and constituents, and he's been giving a unifying speech. Let's uh, bring in Rafiq Salam. Rafiq, um, you've been monitoring the situation before and after and during uh, that particular regional contest, uh, what are the takeaways for you? <laughs> You'd have to unmute. Hello. Perfect. Are you hearing me now? I can hear you perfectly. Let's talk um, about the takeaways. The for you. writing clearly was on the wall as to that some of the executives uh, will fall, but which of the executives will fall? in these elections was what was unknown. Uh, because according to supporters that we have spoken to, faithful of the MPP, they believe that the MPPs uh, see that they won in the last election, five seats uh, which, uh, in 2016, which reduced to a three in 2020. The party faithful have not forgiven the executives of the party. But whose acts that the uh, head of the acts will one of four, they didn't uh, know. And so starting from the chairman, uh, the Saudi Arabian retired English lecturer, S.B. Uh, Kangbaria, uh, many uh, so expected him uh, to fall uh, in this uh, election, but he has gotten a lot of uh, intense campaign the last few days uh, to really uh, catapult him uh, to enable him to uh, beat uh, the man who is the chief executive officer of uh, Zamzam uh, Mineral uh, Water. And so, if you look at the difference, Saudi, the Saudi Arabian man, 74 years of age, and contesting against somebody who is fit uh, to be his uh, grandchild. Uh, actually, the two of them, their mothers are from the same uh, community, the same area. And so, the pitch has strength against each other. The difference between the, the duo was 130. Uh, one, uh, the difference between the duo was 18 hours because Chairman, everywhere Kangbara got 130 votes, and Alaji Tobi Mahama, ATM, got 112 votes. So it was really uh, uh, a two horse race, and then it was really uh, tough uh, for both of them. But you know, if you look at the election, the way uh, it was going, the way that uh, the results were coming in, uh, many thought that uh, uh, the chairman himself was going to fall, because if you look at his team, Team Kambare against Team Alaji Mama. Most of the executives uh, that uh, won the, the election came from the ATM side, talking about uh, Hamid Sana, who happens to be the youth organizer of the party uh, now, and also the regional organizer of the party. He was a neutral. Uh, uh, he calls himself a neutral because he stated that he didn't belong to any uh, other faction. But when you take uh, somebody like the secretary of the party, who used to be the treasurer, uh, of the party, Dr. Daniel Tonko. Uh, Dr. Tango now is the most experienced executive among all uh, mm -hmm. the 10 because he served as treasurer on eight occasions uh, for the party. Now he's moved uh, to the secretaryship uh, position. Now mm -hmm. you have uh, somebody who was, happens to be the first and second vice chairman. The first uh, vice chairman uh, happens to be Do uh, uh, Alhaji uh, Abdurrahman Aziz popular known as Alaji White, he was able to retain his seat. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, uh, Alhaji Aziz Mohamed Guru, who happened to be a former mayor, defeating uh, a host of our three uh, others. And of our, the gist of it is that we have as many as six incumbents, uh, executives uh, in the Upper West Region, losing uh, their executive uh, position in the Upper West Region. Okay. But I can report to you that the strategy didn't go on well for the SB Kangbare asset because many of them didn't want to step down for, for the others. To have a position like the regional circle of the party, as many as six people contested in that election, and then one coming from the ATM side, like to Mama, and the four of them belonging to the Kangbare side. And that really uh, was the reason why okay. they had that, 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 that defeat.
uh, in the election. Well, there's a lot more talk uh, in the Upper West region. Subsequently, I'm sure we'll get to have it uh, because of that speech that he gave that he admits that he hasn't done anything much uh, for the constituents. But Rafiq, in the coming days, uh, we'll get to interrogate that further. But let me take you to the Eastern region. It was an interesting contest there as well uh, because it appears that factionalism also came to play. But these are details that we'll get into. Maxwell Kudako has been monitoring all the events there. Um, he happens also to be a GJ executive. So he knows the ins and outs when it comes to uh, the eastern region. Maxwell, uh, what really would you say are, were the highlights of this uh, particular election in the eastern region? Well, I'm good evening. I think that uh, right from the beginning of this uh, contest, I indicated to our viewers and listeners that the eastern region has attracted so many attention in a sense that um, a lot of prominent people in the party had special interest in who becomes the regional chairman for the party in the Eastern region. And I said, among other things, that it was indeed a contest between the presidency and Mr. Brian a. Champon, who is a member of parliament for a BTV constituency. Give us that Mr. inside Brian. filler. What, what really, how is it a contest between uh, Brian a. Champong and the presidency? Really, how did it play out yesterday? Well, ideally, it was a mere struggle for supremacy um, in the region and for that matter in the party. So um, Mr. Brian e. Champon has worked closely with Mr. Jeff Kunedu for a very long time. Um, and it appears that since last year, is that actually Mr. Brian e. Champon is a part of the core team that uh, brought Mr. Jeff Kunedu to the regional executive election. The last election, we saw him publicly working for and on behalf of Mr. Jeff Kunedu. And it appears that he is one of the core members of his team. And throughout the region, almost all the constituency executives or the delegates um, have been contacted in one way or the other by Mr. Echampon for and on behalf of Mr. Kunedu. So openly, Mr. Echampon was campaigning uh, rigor rigorously for Mr. Jeff Kunedu. And on the other side, you would uh, see um, Mr. Gabi Asariotri Dakon. You would see the likes of the Eastern Regional Representative on the Member of Council of State. You could see prominent persons in government also working tirelessly for Mr. Ojo Bwatin Ajima, who happens to um, be a candidate for the presidency. Mm. The interesting thing is that Mr. Kudu Boatin joined the race just two weeks to the election. And okay. he needs to mobilize resources and tour the entire 33 constituencies the Eastern region. However, Mr. Jeff Kunedu um, started the campaign since last year. Okay. Um, I'm very sure a lot of people who are follow the MPV politics in the Eastern region uh, will know that Mr. Jeff Kunedu started the campaign for a very long time. But uh, even though Mr. Kodu Boatin started in two weeks, a lot of people are a bit surprised about the number of votes that he put. He put 202 votes as against 424 votes that was secured by uh, Mr. Jeff Kunedu. Oh, okay. I must say that aside all, aside all the internal politicking, um, the the process or the processes were, um, as it were, very peaceful. Okay. However, at the at the latter end of the processes or, or the process, um, a bodyguard of Mr. Brandy Champon nearly marred the peaceful process. Okay. After the um, Mr. Jeff Kunedu had. But in me, the ballot was, it was a public ballot. They counted it in public, so everybody could listen to the numbers. So when it was obvious that Mr. Jeff Konedu had emerged, the chairman elect, he stood up from his chair to the minority. The minority hearing refers to uh, Mr. Kodjo Bobatin and his team, led by Mr. Gabi Ochoa Dakon, Mr. Mm -hmm. Hakman Owekwajiman, the member of Castle of he, 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 he approached them to exchange pleasantry to them 
or as okay. well to show uh, uh, his respect to them. But in the process, a bodyguard of Mr. Brandy Champon uh, is, a known, is a known person closer to Mr. Brandy Champon. Uh, wanted to prevent him from exchanging that pleasantry. It created a scene for almost about two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the security had to tame him and then they exchanged the pleasantry. Mr. Jeff Nedu went to meet uh, Mr. Gabi Ochi Dakon. He went to Mr. Hackman Oswajimai. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He went to Mr. Rubio Bwati Ajiman to exchange. Okay. And then it was uh, back and forth. After that, Mr. Kodu also went back to Mr. Jeff Kunadu's place. They also exchanged pleasantry. Yeah, it was yeah. okay. quite very peaceful um, environment. But for that incident, okay. I must say that all the the contenders or all the aspirants showed that level of maturity. But as I said, lots of people were very interested as to who is more influential okay. in the Eastern region. Okay. The well, the, the, uh, well, one the day. These, are, fact, came, these are the nitty gritties that we'll, we'll get into uh, much later, subsequently. Uh, thank you very much. But like they say, it's a good time to be a delegate um, uh, listening to the names uh, in there. But uh, thankfully, uh, the General Secretary of the NPP, Mr. John Buedu, has also joined us via Zoom. But let me quickly bring in uh, my colleague, um, Richard Kujonyako from the Central Region, because that's about the only region uh, that um, is yet to elect uh, the regional executives, un unless otherwise stated. But uh, Richard, what, what really are the dynamics there? Well, so uh, the incumbent chairman, regional chairman is contesting and two other people are con contesting him. But it so happened that the elections had to be postponed. There were issues. The Kufi constituency uh, did not uh, get the opportunity to hold their elections. You know, the constituencies would form the delegates at the regional uh, elections. And so uh, they petitioned the regional uh, election management body for their elections to be conducted, but um, that did not happen. And so they had to go to court to secure uh, a motion, an interlocutory one, for them to be served on the election management body. And so some people had even gone to Dumkawad were on their way to the of in the election venue and then they had to be told that the elections uh, have been postponed because there is an injunction and so that's what really played out in the century well, was it not duly communicated before the time well so they did they were not sure um so the communication came um just in the evening um on the eve of the elections and so people didn't even know about it they were busy campaigning and all of that they felt that in spite of the election injunction because the injunction when they go and then they file for it uh, it has to be um served on the people that they were in, they are intending and so that is why they were not sure maybe they okay did I lose Richard? It appears that I've just lost my colleague, Richard uh, Kujonyako from the Central Region. At least uh, the communication is clear. Um, the Central Region will have to hold it another time. Uh, but let me quickly bring in uh, Precious Temepo. Uh, he's been monitoring today's uh, elections and joins us once again. I'm sure we have a better connection to you now, Precious. Precious, uh, what, what was the situation today? Do we have regional chairman? What, what, what exactly is the situation? Hello, Precious. Much better now. We can hear you, Precious. Bring us up to right. speed on the situation today. Yes. Uh, so uh, one of a kind of an election uh, that we had today, a uh, lot of uh, issues. Uh, though the election started a bit late, uh, way after mid uh, midday, uh, precisely around 12.30 before the election started. But even before that, if may be aware, there were issues of injunctions in uh, Sunyani East and then German uh, South constituencies. But it turned out that there is a third one in Doma Central constituency. So eventually when the election you know, started, uh, supervised by the Electoral Commission officers, they went through the process, constituency after constituency. Now, after the ninth constituency, it was left with the three injuncted constituencies. Mm -hmm. That is Sunyani East, Doma Central, and then German South. Then the Electoral Commission said they have been served with the rate of an interlocutory injunction. So they were not going to continue the process from there. So they started packing their things and ready to start counting and then declare their results. Now, the drama here 
is when the election committee chairman in the Bruno Hafo region, uh, that is Kwabina Opon, said that as far as he is concerned, he has not been saved. He has not received any injunction. So the election will go on as planned for the remaining three constituencies that the Electoral Commission is saying has been injuncted. And for that matter, they have received uh, the notice of the interlocutory injunction. So they also came prepared with their own materials and then continued the election from uh, the 10th constituency, the 11th one, and then the 12th uh, constituency. Well, without now, the supervision, did that happen without the supervision of the Electoral Commission? Yes, that happened without the supervision of the Electoral Commission, because whilst the Electoral Commission were counting the results for the nine constituencies, simultaneously, the election committee chairman and his team were also conducting the election for the remaining three constituencies that okay. according to the EC were injuncted. Mm. So it was happening simultaneously. Mm. Now, after both exercises, two results were declared. Mm. Yes, interestingly, two results were declared. The EC chairperson declared his election result, he tagged it as the certified result. And then the election committee chairman decided to add the three that he supervised to the election committee, the electoral commission's own to make it 12 constituencies and also declared that result. Okay. But in both ways, the results are out and it's a bit confusing as to which result to declare uh, for the public. But let's go with the, that of the Electoral Commission since they are the, uh, the authorized agency to supervise the election. Now, for the exercise, the Nasara coordinator, uh, Alhaji Osman Faiza won the election. He actually is the incumbent, and uh, he won uh, with 138. 138 as against Al Haji Bashir Wahab's own of 117. Uh, 204 took part in the uh, exercise and with one rejected ballot. Now, for the treasurer, Al Haji Isa Kaisa won. He is the incumbent. He defeated Anthony Yebua. And then for the youth of organizer, uh, Abdul Razak Opon defeated Shadrach Abrefi Mensa. Okay. Mm. Whilst in the women's organizer uh, position, Doris Asuma, who was the second uh, vice chairperson of the party, but decided to contest for the women's organizer. Okay. She defeated the incumbent, Dorothy Ama uh, Amponsa, in that particular uh, tight you know, contest. Now, in the organizer position, Evan Safarijan Yebua. Uh, defeated three other, two other, you know, uh, contestants, Darlington, Bill Bwampon, and then Bashiru uh, Hastan okay. Adams. Okay, Precious, we'll, we'll leave it here, Precious. Um, we have all the details uh, we'll put out on myjoinonline.com, especially because uh, the Bono region had their uh, delegates conference today. They elected their regional executives uh, today. So we are waiting for that of the central region. And thankfully, uh, I've been announcing um, that we have the general secretary himself, of the governing New Patriotic Party. Mr. John Buedu, we are grateful. Many thanks for taking time out to be with us tonight. Um, I hope you can hear me, sir. Welcome to the probe. Yeah, thank you very much. Super. So what kind of report have you been receiving from your regional executive elections? I don't understand the question. I'm what asking kind of your, your, your initial assessment. of elected... I think that's so far so good. Uh, we've so far held elections in 15 out of the 16 regions. And it started from 27 to 29, that is today. Mm -hmm. uh, and so far, yes, the election, that, that uh, there are a lot of interest elections that people have really if you check the background of people 
on testing, you realize that these are serious people who intends to help run this party for us to win 2024 elections. So we expected these kinds of arrangement and this kind of uh, enthusiasm and, and participation. And I think that so far, but for some few hitches in some of the regions, uh, I think that just as we did at the polling station level, the electoral area coordinators level, the constituency. And I think that uh, uh, we've had it very, very well. Are we having a bit of challenge there too? Uh, Mr. Bwedu's um, connection will we'll try and rectify that quickly so we'll have a stable connection. It appears we have a stable reaction, um, connection to you. Uh, Mr. Bwedu, uh, we'll, we'll get that um, shortly, but he's been giving us his initial assessment. There are some uh, key areas of concern that we're hoping uh, to put to him. Uh, but once we have a stable connection, we'll get back um, to uh, Mr. Bwedu there on that. Did you say we have um, Rafi Salam back? Yes, okay, so we have Rafiq back and we're told that we have some more information Hello? to add from the yeah. Upper West region. Mr. Wedu, can you hear me now? Uh, Hello, Mr. Wedu. Okay, so let me, do, uh, let me just uh, go to Rafiq quickly and come back uh, to Mr. Bwedu by then we'll have a stable connection to him. Rafiq, I'm told you have in additional information for me from the Upper West region. What's going on? Um, uh, Emma, this election, you may have 35 people who have filed their names out to contest at this uh, election in the upper west region. But in actual fact, there are some, uh, uh, let me put it, some, uh, some ghost, uh, should I say, unseen hands uh, in this election. People who want to be seen as power brokers are uh, in uh, the party, you know, uh, towing the lines of uh, these candidates. So you have people like Anthony Abe Fakabo, former deputy minister for roads and highways, and the deputy minister for uh, sanitation, Amiri Chinia, Isaku, uh, told the line of Allah Yutoiba, Ahama, Mahama. Okay. Actually, there were the people are campaigning uh, on his side. And so you go to the side of uh, SB Kangbara, you have uh, somebody like the Interior Minister, uh, uh, Ambrose P. De, uh, Ambrose Zeri, who's also on that particular side. So it was about the uh, survival. Mm. Who is for Upper West Region, who really has the votes, who are, really have the power over the delegates are uh, in the upper uh, west region. But when you talk about uh, this election, considering what the chairman and his team have uh, put in the last four years, uh, considering what they have promised, uh, if the delegates were to go by what they have said, they have considered all of them as, uh, as people who have failed uh, the, the party. But there is the, is the belief of the delegates of many in the upper west region that it was Ambrose Derry who came to change uh, the situation in the upper West region. How, how did he change? Camp. How did he change the situation? Because I've heard uh, a lot of um, government officials with a certain candidate or the other. What exactly do they do? Just talking to the delegates to get, to change the game. What exactly is the backstory? Well, you know, some of these institutions, uh, 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 MFA, these are contract or job awarding portfolios. <laughs> hmm. Job awarding uh, portfolios. The mere talking to you or promising you that this is what I will do for you. Clearly, may, may be the middle start, may do the trick uh, in some of these uh, instances. Uh, people can may, 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 may uh, do a lot of money uh, to, some, uh, to the delegates, but probably the other side may not have, they may not have an ambulatory uh, in their side. So probably, probably that may be uh, the trick uh, that won the trick, uh, that won the day for SB Akangbara. Okay. Because if you look at, if you look at his team, Almost all, everybody in this team, apart from Elijah White, lost the election. And so clearly means that it was tilted towards one particular side, one direction, and they were hoping for a victory. But at the end of the day, it was Kambare who had a love last. Thank you so much, uh, Rafiq Salam, there, giving us the details from the Upper West region. I will get to the Greater Accra region. Interesting contest also there. My colleague, Chrissy Parker Wilson, has been covering uh, for us uh, the whole of yesterday. Uh, we'll get into that. But let me bring back the General Secretary of the NPP, Mr. Buedu. Mr. Buedu, I'm sure we have a clearer line to you now. So tell us what really the situation with Central Region is. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, just as I've said, uh, we've been able to do 15 out of the 15 regions so far. And so far, just as uh, you are aware, 
it was hotly contested and very competitive. And I want to use the platform to thank all those who were involved, the delegates, participants, those who won, those who lost, the electoral commission, security agencies, and all who helped to ensure that all these 15 regions have been able to successfully hold their regional annual delegate conference in addition to holding elections to elect their regional officers. On the central region, uh, all was set uh, for us to hold the conference on 20th summer. Uh, we have had issues in the country constituents. Uh, a gentleman went for the apply to contest as chairperson uh, in a country constituency. The vetting committee disqualified him based on some uh, altercations that he had with uh, another senior member of the party, the, the regional chairman, uh, to the extent that the regional chairman complained of, of some insults held at him. Uh, the, uh, so he was disqualified at the constituency level. He appealed to the appeals committee, uh, chaired by Professor, uh, uh, chaired by Professor, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Fobi. Uh, so, uh, uh, are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Yeah, chaired by Professor Fobi. Uh, the committee reported that I recommended that the uh, having had the kind of insults that this gentleman held uh, as uh, the regional chairman recommended that he should privately apologize to him and again publicly also apologize to him for, for such behavior. Uh, at the end of the exercise, uh, the committee brought another report that indicated that the gentleman has done so, so he should be allowed to contest. Uh, this report came to us, the regional chairman felt that uh, he hasn't done so to the satisfaction of him and also the directive that was given. So this appeared or came before us as a National Council meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, the National Council meeting recommended that uh, the Alternative Dispute Resolution Committee should handle the issue by hearing or listening to uh, the apology, whether it was a qualified apology or qualified. And the fact that whether he has apologized uh, personally to the regional chair. Unfortunately, the recommendation didn't come early. It came around fast. That indicated that uh, 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 we should uh, hold the elections uh, after the regional uh, uh, annual delegate conference. Uh, because uh, you only need one third quorum to, to hold a regional annual delegate conference. Unfortunately, uh, the party was slapped with an injunction by individuals from the constituents who felt that they were not they allowed to uh, uh, participate in the regional and other delegate conference, but they believe that their elections have not been held. Okay. Being a, a law abiding political party, we decided to uh, we have no option than to respect uh, the injunction, although as party, we still have to adhere to. Uh, 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 the ruling of the court or the judgment of the court. So again, uh, we, we've had, uh, we decided to uh, 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 go by the court decision and also look at internally how, how quickly we can resolve the issue for us to be able to hold the election uh, very soon. So it's, un it's unclear yet whether that election will be held tomorrow a day after, we, we don't really know when the central region will be well, holding their election asked just yet. that uh, the uh, ADR committee has brought their report. I've asked that they should add uh, the public apology that uh, the gentleman offered okay. uh, to the report so that we will know. I think that the ADR also further recommended that the public apology should be unqualified apology. Okay. In their view, it was qualified apology. So the gentleman should do the needful and report back to the ADR. I've asked uh, the secretary to the ADR committee to furnish me with whether or not the gentleman has done what was required in order for us to take a decision. 
So by tomorrow, I expect to receive uh, the feedback from either the gentleman or the secretary to the idea committee for us to take a decision to organize the election. So okay. uh, if all things being equal, we are able to get this feedback by Monday. We can go ahead and organize the election to receive on Wednesday. Okay. Well, but whilst you are uh, becoming a law-abiding citizen as a party in the central region, in the Bono region... Hello, hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm saying that whilst you are abiding by the law in the central region, in the Bono region today, even in spite of an injunction on Sunyai East, Jam and South and Doma Central constituencies, we are told that the Regional Elections Committee chairman went ahead to hold that election without the EC supervision. Has that been brought to your attention? I don't think that is the exact uh, 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 situation that happened. So tell me, uh, what's if, the situation? If you've been listening to your reporter, your reporter said that the elections for the nine constituencies were held, supervised by the Electoral Commission. Exactly what I'm telling you, that apart uh, from the three which had been injuncted. Let's, let's take it step mm -hmm. by step so that we can come to it. Okay. I'm saying that uh, even listening to your own reporter, he said that the Electoral Commission uh, said that they held the election for the nine constituencies. Exactly. With the three constituencies, they said they've been served by uh, court injunction in the three mm -hmm. uh, constituencies. I even uh, shout out to the first time here that uh, the Mass Central, for instance, there was any, any injunction to that, that effect. You see, the difference is that uh, Electoral Commission can be served what it means that they must also serve the party structure. I have not received any judgment from anybody. And just as uh, your reporter said, the uh, election committee chair said he has also not received any injunction. Okay. I think that may be the reason why it went ahead to organize the three others. They're all said and done. We are abiding by the political party act that requires that uh, constituency, region, and national elections of political party, that's Act 574. That uh, constituency, regional and national officers' elections of political party must be supervised by the Electoral Commission. By that, what it means is that the result as announced by the Electoral Commission of the nine constituencies uh, is, is what we are going to assess as a true result for the Bono election held today. Because they, they, they meet all the requirements, they form their column, and, and, and I think that uh, uh, even though we didn't receive any injunction uh, with regard to the three, particularly with uh, the mass Central, I think that uh, it's inconsequential because the Electoral Committee, I don't think that will be lying in that, in that case. So it is said. They are the ones who organize the elections. And, and, and so that's what we are going to accept here. Okay. Well, but generally, um, I was asking earlier about the report that you had received. At least the reports that we got on the ground, uh, even though it was largely successful, uh, we know that there were cases of delayed voting in some regions. I'm told about Greater Accra and Volta. Some, in some cases, we had names not on the register. Also, voting suspended at some point uh, for an hour or so in the Ashanti region. What really, generally, uh, could have happened when it comes to uh, I, I these, think these that, issues? Uh, well, elections everywhere generate some of these uh, issues uh, uh, and all that. Uh, in some cases, it is a result of a lack of understanding or agreement on, on some of the delegates on the left, uh, particularly with the South if you take that from the region. There were issues with the uh, rest of Council of Elders and Council of Patrons. I think that was resolved. Uh, there was an issue with uh, the second rest, for instance, and it took a very long time. At the end of the day, the Electoral Commission decided that they will be allowed over 60 rest of second institutions in Ashanti region to be part of it. There were a few issues with regards to some few constituencies that uh, uh, it's supposed to have been injuncted. Sometimes there's a difference between uh, if one receives injunction and they are able to serve the electoral commission and they are unable to serve the party hierarchy. 
very difficult for us to, to, to go by uh, that decision because we may not know whether it is even true or not because okay. it's not been said. So these are issues that create some of these tensions and hold up. Uh, in Greater Accra, for instance, there was a challenge of uh, the same Tefcon issues and Tefcon uh, list. Some few people disagreed with the list, but later it was resolved. And there was mm. another issue with the uh, IOA system constituency, whether or not they should be allowed uh, to, to vote. What happened was that uh, there was an issue about the qualification of some applicants who wanted to contest at the constituency level. Uh, they appeal, uh, uh, they appeal for, uh, for 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 redress. Uh, it was later uh, they went, later went to court. The court asked that the internal mechanism, the internal redress mechanism of the party, should be used to address the issue. The ADI brought out their recommendation, uh, supported by the National Council of the party. Okay. The aggrieved parties decided that they are not going by the ADR committee and that they want to further litigate the matter in court. So they went to court on Friday. The court summarily dismissed the application. So what it means is that the status quo of the election committee uh, at the constituency was. So the constituency went ahead to hold the constituency annual delegate conference to elect their 10 elected officers and also appointed they are appointees. What, what it means is that they are now qualified to join in, in the voting of Saturday. So that created a bit of a challenge with other people who were not aware that this process was going, went through. I was contacted and I went ahead to clarify the situation and giving the chronology of events and how we arrived at that decision. So okay. some of these things are things that led to a bit uh, they hold up of some of the areas. But eventually, that's why we have the election managers. In addition to uh, the electoral committee, we have seasoned, experienced people as election committee uh, members who are handy at all times to help resolve these problems as we can write. Okay. Well, I know uh, you have your own battle coming up ahead, which you say is the Lord's. But as an independent person in this particular uh, regional contest, were there really any surprises uh, for you in terms of those who emerge winners and losers, I should say? Well, uh, if you want to listen to the social media and uh, uh, traditional media, you may be tempted to believe that X or Y candidate to win. But if you go on the ground, you realize that it is entirely different. So for some of you, it may be a surprise to you, but for some of us, some of the results were a true reflection of, of what is expected to happen. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there are a few ones that uh, some of us were a bit, were a bit surprised. Uh, for instance, uh, there are some other positions like organizer in the Western region who lost, uh, like uh, the woman organizer, and other few positions. But that's what the election is about, really. If you knew the results already, you wouldn't go for election. Mm -hmm. So, in my view, uh, there wasn't much surprises about the election. Okay. So, uh, but for I, us, working on the ground, knowing uh, what the situation is. Uh, at the various uh, constituents. But how about the chairmanship position uh, itself? Even though I'm disappointed that, that there are no women in there, maybe subsequently you can uh, explain why we don't have women at the top hierarchy of the regions. But uh, I think that it will also be good for a woman like you to also join. Like who? Party, like you. Oh, okay. To join the Punu Patriarchy Party and have the confidence to put yourself up to contest. I, 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 love contest. I love Hello? my job. I love my job. I love my job. Is there? I love my job. Thank you. Yes, everybody likes his <laughs> own job. I'm saying that since he's raised a concern about the fact that in most of the areas uh, uh, we didn't have women contesting. It's, it's, it's a concern that all of us must be interested in. We've left those positions to men as if it is lay, dominated, reserved uh, positions. There are some 
and, and, and I think that it's important that okay. uh, as a party we try and encourage a lot of our women. But they are capable of also handling the position. You know, uh, the heat involved in our politics, uh, uh, tension, sometimes it's very difficult for, for us to get mm. uh, some of our capable women also getting or participating at the top. Yeah. Okay. Well, were you expecting Chairman Wun to, to be retained? as the Ashanti Regional Chairman, or were you surprised? This, this is a leading question. Is it? This is a leading question. Okay, I, I'm sure you were expecting him to win, right? I'm not sure, but uh, uh, considering how the vote went, he realized that uh, indeed he's still popular in the race. Mm. Does that make you happy? Well, why would I be happy? This is democracy, and in democracy, all those who participate are people that you must comment. It is not about just the victim. It's about those who even lose it and accept in good faith. It is about those who participate in voting for other people. It is about those of you in the media who are also trying to point out some of the negatives that go to uh, the process in order for us to find the process. So it's not about you being happy or not. It's about mm. uh, having a very successful conference, and that's where we are now. Do you think that delegates rewarded loyalty like they were told to? or They, they did rewarded else? not just loyalty, they rewarded experience, they rewarded innovation, they rewarded people who have done it before and they are capable of doing a, a repeating thing. They rewarded people who have experience, who have a track record, and that's exactly what I saw. If you check and the results in data are almost all uh, the positions were occupied by people who, who have gone through the mail. And that's exactly what the, the signal that there is is yes. Mm. So uh, with the uh, regional executives election out of the way, I know we are preparing for July uh, for the national contests. Uh, tell us a bit more about what to expect now that this is out of the way. Uh, the road to the national executive elections? Yeah, now that um, the almost back for central region, which we are going to deal with in the coming week, uh, we are done with the 15. Uh, this open the floodgates for mm -hmm. the roadmap to the National mm -hmm. Annual Delegate Conference. So very soon, uh, statements indicating the schedule, opening on late in period, vetting, uh, appeal period, those who form the, uh, 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 the elections committee, the mm. appeal committee, and all the processes uh, will be laid out for everybody to know and you, the media, to also follow. So very soon you you, you hear from us. Mm. Okay, well, well, we'll talk about yours, maybe, but the win of some executives are already being linked to the presidential race and the deepening factionalism uh, between the Baumia and Alan Camps. I don't know if you're aware of this uh, and what really is I, the I didn't significance get your you say. Well, you say well. I'm saying that the win of some executives, at least the regional executives elections, they are those who are already, uh, you know, drawing the links between uh, the Baumia and Alan Camps and what it will mean for that presidential race and in some cases even uh, for the national contest as well. Is that really the case? You are on the ground. Well, I don't look at it from, from that angle. Sometimes you hear uh, uh, individuals saying that, oh, we won out of the 10 positions, we won eight. Uh, the other side won two. By the time you realize, even the eight they are talking about, there are individuals different individuals sponsoring the eight. So in your mind, you had eight, but in reality, you had six. Do you understand? Mm. I had the occasion to uh, 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 witness some discussion by some constituents who thought that they had six and the other side had four. By the time they realized, two of the people that they think they sponsored had joined the other four meaning they were better sponsored by the other group than you think you did. So, sponsored? How do you mean sponsored? So sponsored by supporting them. Okay, you how? As an individual, for instance, the chairman contesting an election, they decide that uh, he wants 
specific person to be the organizer or secretary or youth organizer and they support the individual in terms of campaigning for the person or even uh, providing financial support and all that. Mm -hmm. That is the point that I think. You may to... think that you are the only person supporting the person. You don't know that your opponent may be even supporting him or her better than you do. You know, so yes, this analysis uh, rightfully will be going on. People will be discussing potential presidential, national uh, officers, elections, parliamentary, and all that. By the end of the hour, I've seen a situation where individuals put together the list of all delegates. The person, the chairperson of the constituency, was the one who prepared the entire album. Went to the election, they didn't get 20% of the, of the vote. So these things are things that, uh, yes, people may have uh, their views about it, you may have supported or what, but it doesn't tell you anything. Mm. Uh, but speak of sponsorship, we, we, we've been told that it appears that there's been a lot, it's a good time to be a delegate uh, because um, they, are, they are richer than they went into uh, this election. Is it real? Sometimes, it real? if you sit back and talk like this, uh, it's, it's amusing. Uh, it's, it's not as simple as that. Uh, people becoming constituency officers didn't all of a sudden became constituency officers. They have worked in this party, many of them contested elections in their own constituency. They also have to spend money by traveling, paying uh, travel expenses for people, providing uh, 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 other other resources for people. So it is not actually like like if you sit back, oh, it's a good time to become a delegate. It is not cheap to become a delegate. You spend okay. a lot to become a delegate, and mm. it is not because you are going to get the reward after 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 spending. There's little that one gets for transportation there cannot compensate for the risk the person is taking. Just as you said, you love your job. People who are contesting for this uh, position may have lost their job elsewhere. Mm. I know instances where people working in local government uh, establishments and institutions have to resign to come and contest for various positions in our party. These are risks that people who sit back and just want to make more free of the entire process, you say, oh, this is a good time to become a delegate. If it is simple to become a delegate, everybody will have seen. It's okay. not very simple like that. Okay. Well, um, uh, if you say so. But does it mean then that um, campaigning for the national executive position is officially open, or you would have to uh, make that formal announcement for that to start? Well, people who want to contest for national executive position are Chris Cosby, the captain already. Mm. Uh, but it will be formally open uh, by the announcer. But if you look at our various uh, press statements that we uh, issued, uh, we're still giving the timetables already that in order to uh, uh, concretize this, we uh, issue a statement formally opening for, for, for the campaign for the national. Okay. Uh, well, just before I let you off, Mr. Buedu, though, um, we know about the Awain situation. Uh, the burning of a party office. What, what, what really has become of that? Um, is there a particular decision that has been taken by the party on this? Well, it is unfortunate that uh, uh, party people want to take their law into their own hands and do things that um, anti party behavior. Uh, if you have an issue uh, uh, with the party of the you don't go breaking party offices. So we've asked that. The security agencies, because many of them were shown in video and that are available. We have asked that the security agents to, to, to uh, resolve us for them to report to them and they should take action. And we want to make sure that uh, uh, punitive action is taken against them in order to uh, serve as deterrent for others. Because many of these people who go and vandalize parts of the society anything to the burden of the offices or the uh, purchase of the chairs and tables of our party offices. You understand? So I think that it's important if you have issue or one issue or the other, it does not give you the right to go and vandalize the of the party. Mm. 
Mm. If you do that, it's a criminal offense, and the law of Ahlan will face the cost of it. Okay. Well, uh, I really said that was the last, but really, in wrapping up, uh, I, would, I would just want to find out um, how the campaign for you is going, since you've already mentioned that executives, those who are vying for the national position, are already crisscrossing the country. I suppose you are doing the same as well. How is it going? Is the battle uh, uh, just for, about so? For, for me? Yes, for you. Oh, yes, uh, because I'm almost uh, managing the entire process uh, from polling station to the regional level. Is it working station. to your advantage? Oh, not exactly, because uh, if you are not very, very careful, it works to your disadvantage, because you hear every now and then somebody goes to do something in the constituency that I've never been there, and it's my name that is mentioned. You understand? Mm. People go and misbehave, and uh, they create an impression as if I'm the one who answers the best. No, So it doesn't go to... Uh, my advantage at all. But okay. I cannot also decide to put my arm uh, at my back and allow some of these things to go on without taking decisions that will help strengthen the path. So it is about the path, we are not my person. Because if I'm to even look at my person, I won't be involved in some of these decisions and all that. Uh, okay. So yeah. having done the and being able to successfully down to uh, the regional level, I'm now, I think, committed because it's now that we are getting to open nomination for the national election. So my team has decided that uh, I'll be launching my campaign on Tuesday, okay. 10 a.m. at Aliza Hotel to let the Ghanaian people and particularly the party the put local that uh, if uh, national uh, open nomination for members of the party to uh, decide to contest for national position of the party, okay. I, John Boyd, will take the form and contest again uh, as a general secretary. Okay. For the we, we wish you all the best. Many thanks uh, for your company, sir. We're really grateful. That's the General Secretary of the NPP, John Buedu there. We've been talking about the regional executive elections just ended. We're just waiting for the central region, the only outstanding region now. And this is the probe. Uh, many thanks uh, for your company. Uh, for our radio audience, the Walk of Jesus is up next. Many thanks to the entire production team uh, for this evening's edition. Another edition comes your way same time. Have a good evening. I am MFR Powell.